Julie Broad is an Amazon overall number one best selling author, an international book award winner, and recipient of the Beverly Hills Book Award for best sales book. She's the founder of Book Launchers, a company she started to help busy entrepreneurs and professionals build their brand and boost their business by writing, publishing, and selling a top quality book. She's here with us today to talk about writing and publishing a nonfiction book. Welcome to the podcast, Julie. I'm so excited to have you. Oh, thanks for having me, Pat. I think it's going to be a really fantastic uh, conversation, especially for all of our business owners that are thinking about writing a book. So why don't you just explain to them what you do and then kind of more importantly, why you do it? Yeah. So Book Launchers is a full service self-publishing company. Um, What that means is you are actually the publisher, but we act like a traditional publisher. So some people get a little confused. They contact me and they're like, will you please publish my manuscript? And I'm like, yes, but probably not in the way that you think. (laughs) (laughs) So so we have a full team of writers, writing coaches, um, three different kinds of editors, a marketing team and a researcher. Um, a fact checker, we have everything and more than a traditional publisher will have. But at the end of it, you keep all rights, you keep all royalties, and you have full control. Um, You're the CEO of this book. So you always have final say, which is not the case in traditional publishing. Yeah, absolutely. And so how'd you get started doing this? Yeah, I mean, it goes back to the why question. I, I uh, I was building a platform in real estate in Canada as an investor. And uh, I ended up getting introduced to a publisher. And it was kind of one of those moments where I hadn't really thought about a book, but like deep down, I'd always wanted to be a writer as a young girl. That's kind of, I wrote stories, short stories and all those kind of things. Yeah. And, uh, and suddenly I was like, oh my God, I can get a book published. And it was so exciting. Um, and then the publisher, the publisher didn't like my idea, but they said, you know, we're interested in working with you. And they gave me an idea. And so we built this book proposal and after 90 days of going back and forth and I hired people to review the proposal and all that stuff, the publisher ended up saying, mm, we don't think you're going to sell enough books for us to give you a book deal. Mm-hmm. Um, and, <laughs> and it was devastating, but it was actually the greatest gift that I ever could have been given because first of all, I didn't really want to write the book that they wanted me to write, yeah. um, but I was kind of enamored with like, oh, I'm getting a book deal. Uh, but the second <laughs> yeah. piece was that It forced me when I did kind of recover (laughs) ego wise, it forced me to kind of look at self-publishing more seriously. And I decided to do it better than if I had gotten that book deal. And that forced me to learn all about book marketing and publishing and all the things. And I ended up taking that book to number one on Amazon. So I had a Dan Brown. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, it's fine. It's called more than cash flow. Um, The real risks and rewards of profitable real estate investing. And and I, you know, I outsold any real estate book they've published in Canada on Amazon anyways, <laughs> Yay. Um, which, which was awesome. But it, it also opened my eyes to, first of all, the opportunities for business owners and, and professionals and, and people that were like myself that wanted to publish a book. Uh, and it also kind of showed me the challenges, which primarily revolve around marketing. Um, mm-hmm. Nobody that I hired was thinking about how the book was going to sell. I was totally responsible for that at every step of the way. And you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. And, and it kind of really opened the door to me to, to dream up a company that I would have liked to hire. And, yeah. and that's Book Launchers. Yeah. Wow. That's a really cool story. And so uh, yeah, I know you deal just in nonfiction. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. I mean, it we want to be the first choice in publishing. So if you want to be the first choice in anything, you can't start trying to do everything for everybody. Uh, And, and especially in books, like every genre has its nuances. And when you're, if you include fiction, I mean, that's a whole, you know, there's so many genres and so many nuances there as it is, even in nonfiction, there's quite a few. So we tend to really focus on memoir, um, self-help, business, finance, uh, and I know I'm missing it, like health, health and wellness, that kind of stuff. Um, and those still have little nuances, but it's all kind of under that umbrella of this is some, this is an expert sharing their lessons and their how to's and their guidance. So, um, that's kind of part of the reason. The other piece is the model. I understand it. I've done it. Um, we've yeah. helped a lot of people do it is with nonfiction, you know, ideally you make money selling books, but that's not the ultimate goal. The book is a tool. 
Yeah. And, and we understand in my team, we've all really built the entire business around using the book as a tool to grow your business, to become known as the thought leader, to get speaking engagements, to get on media. Um, and, and that's why nonfiction. Yes. And so that was my question. My next question was, what are the good reasons why somebody should consider writing a book? And I, I think you answered that. Do you have anything to add to the, what you just said? I'll add one thing, and that is that in, in this world that we live in, in most industries, we all have very similar education. And so people try to compete on years of experience, which is not a great thing. Like, you know, it's kind of like, like I'm old, so I'm good. <laughs> you know? I'm wise. Yeah, exactly. So, I, but if you have a book, it, you know, years of experience isn't what you're competing on anymore. It's like, I am the author of this book. So it's a very, very strong differentiator for anybody in an industry and for speaking and consulting. It's often what companies are looking for. It, it's, it's not a question of what, you know, if you've written a book, it's a question of what books have you written? Yeah, I, I know. I work with a lot of people who are speakers and um, it's really uh, interesting how when they're talking to different uh, associations or corporations or whatever who have different budgets, they can kind of leverage their book as part of their negotiation. Have you seen that too? Yeah, it's a great point because a lot of places your fee is set. Like this is what you're going to get for your fee, but then they have another budget, like an education budget or a marketing budget or some other budget that they can pull from to buy books. And yeah. so you can sell your book for $20 a copy and you're making now an extra $14, which yeah. can add, you know, $1,500, $2,000 to your speaking fee that you didn't have without the book. So, yeah. and, and some organizations don't have a speaker's fee budget, but they are able to buy books. And so sometimes, you know, if there's some a gig that you really want, um, you know, that's a way to get yourself some money out of the whole thing, or at least sell books at the back of the room. So it gives you more options. Right, right. Because lots of times speakers are looking to get uh, clients from the audience. Exactly. It's a whole nother topic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so is there a, a category of people or any uh, traits of people that you can think of that probably should not write a book? Um, I mean, it's a commitment. Like, and that's the thing. A lot of people, there's no, there's no magic button. If you want to do this well, um, a lot of people try to tell you that you can write a book in a weekend or, you know, here's your <laughs> yeah, book, right. your book will be published in 90 days. And they're really just preying on that, you know, desire to have this be easy. But if you want a book, you're going to be proud of, that's going to do all these things that we've talked about and more, you know, it's going to take you probably somewhere between nine to 24 months, depending on how readily the content is available off your head. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> and, and so I think that it's not a matter of people that don't have the content or the story, or they shouldn't write a book because they're, they're not good enough. It's more like the people that aren't ready to make that time, energy, resource commitment to creating a book. They're looking for an easy path, and it's not that. Right. Um, and the other kind of category, I think, are people that believe their story is so great, it's going to be the, 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 the pathway to riches. Um, and, and that's not to say that your story isn't great. And that's not to say that there won't be money in the book. Both are, you know, both are possibilities and your story being great is quite likely. I've heard so many extraordinary stories, yeah. um, but the path to riches, a great book is not the, is not the only thing that it takes. Like, in fact, if you look on the bestseller list, a lot of the books are kind of, eh, they're fine. Right. Like, <laughs> so that tells you it is not about a great book. It's not about a great story in a lot of cases that that actually makes you the bestseller and gets a lot of the money coming in. So there's so much more to it. Um, and so it's not that they shouldn't write a book, but I always kind of think their expectations should be slightly altered so that they take a different path and they go into it with a lot more energy. So their book hopefully does succeed. Yeah, right. So can you give us some tips like when somebody's thinking like you said, you had this like ur urge to write a book. What should be the first few steps that they should take? The first, the first step, I mean, there's kind of two and they, and in my mind, they compete for first place. Um, and one is getting absolute clarity on who this reader is. Um, your reader is not everyone and it, it has to be a specific person, ideally with a specific problem that you have a way to help them solve that is slightly different than how they've tried to solve the problem in the past. Yeah. Um, and so that means you are going to be niche and that's okay yeah. because that's going to help you market the book. But a lot of people are like, oh, it's women between the ages of 25 and 50. <laughs> and I'm like, my 25 year old self 
had very different problems than my 40 year old self. Like, <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> very different people. So you really want to hone in, not just, you know, demographics are certainly part of it to a point, but I'm really like, go, go to the emotional things. Like, what are they, what are they trying to aspire to? What's their biggest challenge? What's keeping them awake at night and how can you help? And that's really where you want to go. Um, the other thing is your own goals. And this, I kind of alluded to this, but you want to marry up the two. Uh, so you want to make sure that your goal that you're trying to, your bigger picture. So if you want to be a speaker, just since we've already been talking about that, yeah. if you want to be a speaker and you want to be a paid keynote speaker, you know, that's going to be probably large corporations and associations that are paying you. Well, you can't write a book about like childhood estrangement. <laughs> I mean, you can, but you can't write that book and expect it to lead to paid keynote speaking. Yeah. Um, there's a there's a too big of a disconnect between your bigger picture goal and the book topic and the audience that you're writing for. So you want to you want to write about something else that you know, like communication or solving problems or millennial management. You know, whatever it is, um, yeah. you got to look at what the corporations are going to pay you to do and make sure that those fit. So that's why I say they kind of compete against each other mm -hmm. uh, because they're both equally important for setting up your book for success. Yeah. And so what's the process for working with your company? Yeah. So we've actually, it's an evolution. So we're always changing. Our, our latest iteration is that you actually start with a conversation with our book marketing manager. Okay. Um, and, and that's because what we, we used to do that after the book was drafted. But what we found is that positioning, that author positioning, that understanding of that reader that you're going to be marketing to that's vital from the very beginning. And the marketing team comes at it at a slightly different angle than the writing team. Um, and so, you know, we've, we've started with marketing now. Um, we used to try to extract it from the writing process, but now we're like, okay, marketing first. And then we pair you with a writer or a writing coach. We get that first draft. Um, some people come to us with a first draft. Um, we still start with the marketing person and then we would send it off to editing. Um, and, and often what happens is you come to us with a first draft we do a content edit and then we send you back to work with a writer or a writing coach anyways. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. either way, you're probably going to end up on this path. It just might start at a different place. Um, and then we put you through, you know, all the editing, the design and then distribution and then marketing at the end. But, you know, that starting place and then layering marketing in throughout the whole process, um, not just with meetings, but we're doing audits and we're looking at social media, your email funnel, your website, uh, influencers, yeah. we do influencer research. So there's a whole bunch that kind of goes into it. Yeah. And do you help the person research the market to make sure that their book does have a place in the market? We do all the research for them. Um, but the, the positioning and the sale, the saleability is interesting because we don't, I, it's one of those things where everybody's like looking for a guarantee. What we do yeah. is we make sure that there's a clear audience and that we know how to reach that audience. I don't, we do end up doing market research. We have different tools that we use to see. Um, and that's more for category placement because the reality is that if I can see where your audience is hanging out, chances are pretty good that we're going to be able to help you sell books. Yeah. It's the people who come and say, I've got, you know, it's my audience is everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like <laughs> that's going to be a problem. Right. And if there are other books written in that um, topic, that just shows you that people are interested in buying books about that, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I'm not really worried about the competition in a space per se, um, but we are mindful of things like leadership books, general leadership books are really hard to sell um, mm -hmm. because you're competing with a ton of books and a ton of people with really, really big names. Yes. So, you know, my recommendation is if you want to write a leadership book that you pick a really tiny piece of that leadership pie and be like, this is the leadership for starting managers, or this is leadership for introverts that are, you know, like, yeah. you know, and not even just introverts, but like another step in that, in that thing that you're trying to solve the problem for. Um, and so that's what we would do versus looking at the market going, oh, there's no market for this. Yeah. Um, because I don't believe that. And, and the data doesn't talk about bulk sales. The data comes from book scan or from Amazon sales. Yeah. And that's not the whole picture. Like uh, there's a lot of authors that sell a ton of books direct to companies, yes. direct to associations. So, right, right, right. And so how long have you been in business? Uh, five years. Wow. Great. That's fabulous. And how, how many book authors have you helped? I guess that's the question. Uh, we're over 350 now. Wow. That's amazing. 
So tell me about environmental changes and how things are COVID and supply chain issues and all those things. How are they affecting your business and yeah. the book publishing business in general? Yeah, I mean, it's been an interesting couple of years because it's, you know, one thing I've told everybody is to give yourself more time, especially, you know, when your book is done to the time you're going to launch, because even getting print proofs has been a real challenge because the paper supply and the cost of paper has gone up. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of our printer, a lot of our printers have had backlogs because a lot of the big publishers are funneling through some of the smaller print companies now. Uh -huh. And so, so there's so many new challenges that are arising. And, and that's why I always tell people, give yourself more time than you think you need. Um, and, you know, I always look at every challenge as an opportunity. And one of the cool things we're seeing emerge, especially in the business book category, is the demand for audiobooks. And that's great news because paper costs are going up and you know that nobody is going to eat that except for the author, right? That's going to get pushed down to the self-publishing author to eat that loss of profit. And so those print books are going to profit, are going to net you out less and less, but audiobooks are selling more and more. So yeah. now you've got this huge opportunity in audio to dominate and be discovered. And there's way less backlist in audiobooks. So uh, I can kind of, for every challenge we're seeing, I can go, okay, this is the opportunity in this. So this is how you can take advantage of it, but you can't take advantage of any of that if you haven't written your book. So yeah. <laughs> you need to write your book. <laughs> yeah. Step one. <laughs> Great. Well, thanks. So uh, what do you do for fun? <laughs> Well, I'm a mom, so it's kind of like the business and my son are my life. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I take care of myself. You know, I go to the gym, you know, I do I eat lots of self-care in my life to, to handle all this fun and challenge that comes with all the things I do. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm having tons of fun with my five-year-old. We play in the pool and, and uh, build lots of Legos. <laughs> okay, cool. Okay. So one thing I always ask everyone who's on the podcast with me are, what are three traits that when you see those traits in a person, you know that they'll they'll write their book and follow through and and you know stay the course. So you know what are those traits for you? Yeah, determination. You know that persistence, that determination. They're not going to let challenges stop them. Um, clarity. You know they know what they know who they're serving, why they're serving them, how they're serving them. That's really powerful. Um, and then I think I think three is that you know that will to get it done or just that action taking personality. Um, because again, this is a long project. So you have to have that kind of personality that's going to keep going, but also that's willing to start. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks. So how can people learn more about you and your company? Yeah. I mean, the, the place I hang out personally is YouTube. So booklaunchers.tv is my YouTube channel. Um, mm -hmm. But if you want a download to help you basically figure out the steps that we talked about, uh, go to booklaunchers.com forward slash seven, the number seven steps. And that's a download on the seven steps to, you know, write a book that will sell. Um, so it positions you with your reader, your hook and your outline and, and gets you rolling. Great. Well, thanks so much for being on with me today. It was really fun talking to you. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Soar to Success podcast. For more insights into growing your business or improving your quality of life, visit SoarToSuccessMagazine.com and subscribe to the Soar to Success podcast on iTunes.